Merry Christmas and happy holidays, gals and guys. In this edition of My Media Helpers Entertainment Online, we'll take a peek at Merry and Bright films that are streaming through the Jolly Bandwidth near you. I'm playing catch up here in the next week as I wasn't able to complete all the videos due to work and my other play. Most of this series of Christmas reviews are half to fully complete, so we'll get through them. And in these videos, I will jump on a different streaming service to give you my best picks as to what flicks to check out this 2021 holiday season. There are so many movies on these streaming services, it's hard to determine what's worth watching. I want to recommend some of my personal favorites. The films I present to you aren't necessarily award winners by any stretch of the imagination. These are solid films, and they're certainly worth a watch during the festive season. I should also mention some of these streaming services offer the same exact movies, so I won't be covering the same one twice, and you may be able to get a review of the same movie on a different video, so make sure you check all the Christmas review videos. For today's picks, we're going to explore my top five of what Pluto TV has to offer in no particular order. Pluto TV was kind of a pain in the ass to even recommend five films for you, so this video may be a little different than the rest. At least different than the first two. Let's get through it, shall we? The Bishop's Wife is a 1947 Samuel Goldwyn romantic comedy feature film directed by Henry Coster and starring Cary Grant, Loretta Young, and David Niven. The plot is about an angel who helps a bishop with his problems. The film was adapted by Leonardo Brickovici, <laughs> Robert E. Sherwood from the 1928 novel of the same name by Robert Nathan. Bishop Henry Bowman, troubled with funding the building of a new cathedral, prays for divine guidance. His plea is seemingly answered by a suave angel named Dudley, who reveals his identity only to the clergyman. However, Dudley's mission is not to help construct a cathedral, but to spiritually guide Henry and the people around him. Henry has become obsessed with raising funds to the detriment of his family life. His relationships with his wife, Julia, and their young daughter, Debbie, are strained by his focus on the cathedral. Production was not without troubles. Producer Samuel Goldwyn replaced director William A. Seiter with Henry Coster to create a completely new film. In early previews, audiences disliked the film, so Billy Wilder and Charles Breckett made uncredited rewrites. Even so, and even though the premiere of The Bishop's Weiss was accomplished with critical success, the film didn't do very well at the box office at first. Market research showed that moviegoers avoided the film because they thought it was religious. So Goldwyn decided to retitle It's Carrie and the Bishop's Wife for some U.S. markets while adding a black text box with the question, Have you heard about Carrie and the Bishop's Wife on posters in markets where the film kept the original title? By adding Grant's first name to the title, the film's business increased by as much as 25%. Location filming was in Minneapolis, Minnesota. In the scene in which Dudley conducts the boys' choir, the Charles Gonad composition, Noel Monet, Monet Adieu, <laughs> sorry about that, was performed by uh, Robert Mitchell Boys' Choir. The song Lost April featured in the film, his lyrics written for it by Nat King Cole, who also recorded it. The film won the Academy Award for Best Sound and was nominated for Best Director, Best Film Editing, Best Music, Scoring of a Dramatic or Comedy Picture, and Best Picture. I've known about this film since I was a little kid with no real interest in ever watching it, although I did enjoy Cary Grant and other movies, and probably if I wasn't doing reviews for Pluto TV, I still would have never seen it. Not only is it a great holiday movie, it's a great movie overall. I can't imagine that I'm the only one that ever pointed this out, but it's as if The Bishop's Wife and It's a Wonderful Life were in the same cinematic universe together, like a holiday version of the Marvel comic universe. I'm sure it's purely coincidental, but the fact that different two angels in two different films are tasked to inspire two different protagonists that life is so much more than what they initially believed is pretty stellar. I love The Bishop's Wife, and I highly recommend it more than a lot of films I'm covering in the next few days. This was a delightful surprise of a movie that will certainly fill you with Christmas cheer and the holiday spirit. A uh, Merry Friggin' Christmas is a 2014 American black comedy film directed by Tristram Shapiro and written by Phil Johnston. The film stars an ensemble cast featuring Joel McHale, Lauren Graham, Clark Duke, Oliver Platt, Wendy McClendon Covey, Tim Heidecker, Candace Bergen, and Robin Williams. 
The film was released by Phase 4 Films on November 7th of 2014. Boyd Mitchler must spend Christmas with a strange family of misfits. Upon realizing that he left all of his son's gifts at home, he hits the road with his dad in an attempt to make the eight-hour round trip before sunrise. The film was released by Phase 4 Films on November 7th of 2014. It is the first film starring Robin Williams to be released after his death on August 11th of 2014. A Merry Friggin' Christmas received negative reviews from critics. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has a rating of 14% based on 21 reviews with an average rating of 3.45 out of 10. On Metacritic, the film has scored a 28 out of 100 based on the reviews from 11 critics, indicating generally unfavorable reviews. There are a couple reasons why this made it into my top five for Pluto. First off, there's a general lack of quality Christmas movies on this platform. The most important is the fact this is a little-known film starring the late, great Robin Williams. The movie is far from good. It's not necessarily funny, nor do you really care for any of the characters. I just wanted you to be aware of it, and if I'm off base on this one, certainly let me know down in the comments. And that's about it for Christmas streaming movies. I sat down for a good hour to watch trailers for the other movies spotlighted on Pluto TV. And if the films are based on anything like the trailers, I can't recommend any of them. This was certainly not a position I wanted to get into when putting this video together. But I am determined to salvage it in the name of Christmas. Let's just face it here. And now the majority of Christmas movies are garbage. When you factor in Hallmark and all the family channel stuff, they're schlock. They're all the same when you get really down to it. Terrible writing, terrible acting, and a soundtrack you want to tear your ears out <laughs> after listening to, I swear. Is this a very Christmas-like attitude to take when explaining these films? Well, it's like this. I either glaze over the fact these movies are shit, or I direct you to something truly special in order to not waste your time. If you love watching the same movie over and over again, certainly go ahead and ignore my reviews. If you want something different to watch this holiday, then let me continue on and see if we can give this video a successful ending. As explained in other videos, in good conscience, I can't recommend these crappy movies. It boggles my mind how anyone thinks these films are good um, or even a good idea to make. Let's delve deeper into Pluto TV as it's a really great platform for free entertainment. They just come up with short for uh, free on-demand Christmas movies. Let's talk about The Terminal. The Terminal is a 2004 American comedy drama film produced and directed by Steven Spielberg and starring Tom Hanks, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Stanley Tucci. The film is about an Eastern European man who is stuck in New York's John F. K. Airport Terminal when he is denied entry to the United States and at the same time is unable to return to his native country because of a military coup. Some have noted that the film appears to be inspired by the story of Mauran Karami Nassari, also known as Sir Alfred, an Iranian refugee who lived in the Terminal 1 of the Charles de Gaulle Airport, Paris, from 1988, when his refugee papers were stolen in 2006, when he was hospitalized for unspecified ailments. In September 2003, the New York Times noted that Spielberg bought the rights to Nassari's life story as the basis for the film. And in September 2004, The Guardian noted Nassari received thousands of dollars from the filmmakers. However, none of the studio's publicity materials mentioned Nassari's story as an inspiration for the film. The 1993 French film Lost in Transit was already based on the same story. In deciding to make the film, Steven Spielberg stated that after directing Catch Me If You Can, I wanted to do another movie that could make us laugh and cry and feel good about the world. This is a time when we need to smile more, and Hollywood movies are supposed to do that for people in difficult times. Spielberg traveled around the world to find an actual airport that would let him film for the length of production, but could not find one. The terminal set was built in a massive hangar at the LA Palmdale Regional Airport. The hangar, part of the US Air Force Plant 42 complex, was used to build the Rockwell International B. Uh, 1B Bomber. The set was built to full earthquake construction codes and was based on Dusseldorf Airport, I guess. The shape of both the actual terminal and the set viewed sideways is a cross-section of an aircraft wing. Because of this design, the film was one of the first to use the spider cam for film production. The camera most often used for televised sports allowed Spielberg the ability to create sweeping shots across the set. The design of the set for the terminal, as noted by Roger Ebert in his reviews and attested by Spielberg himself in a feature by Empire Magazine, was greatly inspired by Jacques Jacques Tati's classic Playtime 
Hanks based his character characterization on Victor Navarsky, on his father-in-law, Alan Wilson, a Belgian immigrant who, according to Hanks, can speak Russian, Turkish, Polish, geek, Greek, not geek, <laughs> maybe geek and Greek, a little bit of Italian, a little bit of French. In addition to his native Bulgarian, Hanks also had some help from a Bulgarian translator named Peter Devsky. This isn't considered a Christmas film. It certainly could be. It has all the themes and tropes of a great Christmas film, and I would recommend this over a lot of terrible that is being played on Pluto under the Christmas theme. I just couldn't find any worthy Christmas movies, as I mentioned, and I want to recommend something that is actually good. The Terminal is great. Feel-good movie for the holiday. And the other two I recommend are Starman and Rain Man, with those links also down in the description. I'm not going to bother to run through the trailers. They're both great movies that deal with themes of family and could easily be turned into a holiday affair. I, I promised five guys. movie um, recommendations, yeah, really so I gave them. I mean, uh, let's get off script, and I'm going to movies. jump in here. Uh, I just wanted to jump in here and kind of show you. Um, I mean, I'm supposed to be doing each video as five uh, my favorite picks of each platform. Uh, I just couldn't find five Christmas picks that uh, that jazz me or thought were any good. Uh, these are reviews or my opinions, so that's what you get. I want you to be aware that uh, Pluto also has these specials here, and there's a lot of good content here. In uh, cooking shows, there's these uh, holiday lights with music. I believe there's a Yuletide log. Oh, Yuletide log. Yuletide log. <laughs> Yuletide log here. That's cool. Just play in the background. Um, Oh, they got a whole se season one. What do they got? Oh, just other. I see. You just pull them. You just put that in the background. Hang out. I don't know. Cook. Make cookies. Whatever. Uh, something else cool that they have is uh, live TV streams. And they do this for the season. And it says right here, season greetings. I just want you to be aware that they exist. And again, a lot of cool stuff. Melrose Place. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if that's the remake or the original. Uh, those look like kind of the Hallmark-esque kind of films right there. Oh, Julia Childs. Oh, Julia Childs. The late, great Julia Childs making some Christmas cookies or bread, perhaps. Um, all right, I'm not sure. That's not exactly Christmas Christmas. Um, yeah, there's other ones here. There's just, just stream all day. Go crazy. Just hang out with some beers and... Watch Digital Fireplace Crackle. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Holiday Lights. That's pretty. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted you to be aware of that stuff on here because there's a lot of quality entertainment on here, and they have a lot of great movies that aren't Christmas. All right, guys and gals, uh, I wish you Merry Christmas. I was able to finish another one for Christmas Eve, and hopefully I can do one more, and then that only leaves me with three more after that, uh, which I will get out uh, before New Year's. So once again, I wish you a Merry Christmas um, and a Happy New Year, and I will catch you later. As always, please share, subscribe, and like my channel. It's Christmas time. It's time for you to give. Give me some likes and subscribes and hit that stupid bell for updates, and I will talk to you soon. I'll talk to you later. I appreciate you all, and I'm